Hey, 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 I'm Karim Abdul Jabbar. Oh no, actually I'm Javi Moreno, you already know it. And what are we going to do today? Well, let me show you. We are going to host a static website on AWS S3. So we will take advantage of the 11 nines of durability, the, uh, the region wide nature of this service and the low pricing in, in the hosting. And by the way, we are not going to use any computational resource for this action. So we are not going to pay a single dollar for EC2 or other, uh, or other kind of resource that we would usually need if you want to implement a website using, for example, WordPress or another technology that, like that. The services that we are going to need to touch are the IAM, which we are going to use to create a web admin user. We are going to also download and install the AWS command line interface because we want to automate from the, our laptop the uploading of the website. Of course, we will need to touch S3 because we are going to create a configure a bucket. It will be the container of our website. We will use, as I, I have said before, the command line interface to upload the website to S3. And finally, we will radiate a domain to our S3 bucket. So we are going to use root 53. Ah, let's do it. Let's start by creating the, the user. So we choose the in an identity and authentication management service. And we simply go to users and click on add. The name of the user is going to be webmaster. All right, and we will provide programmatic access so we can use this user from our laptop using the command line interface. I will click next and Usually, we should attach the permissions to a group and add the user to that group. Or, for example, we, we should create a group named Webmaster or Web Admins and attach our user Alice or Bob or Javi or whatever is our names to that group. But we, are, but we are going to simplify things and directly attach policies, permissions to that user, the new user. We look for S3 full access permission and we activate it. It is important to click on the checkbox and this is going to be enough for our small experiment. Finally, we click the next review and we create our user. In a few seconds, we will get the link that this user could use to access to in the console and the programmatic credentials that we can uh, use to, to impersonate that user from the command line interface. We can download those credentials in a file because it will be easier for us to remember them and never ever show these credentials, the secret access key, because it is the equivalent to a password. But hey, this is a screencast, so this is our secret access keep anyway i will click on close and we have already created our user next step is to actually download and configure the command line interfaces interface tools you can do that by searching for aws command aws command line interface and clicking on the installing link. And here you will have a lot of different ways to install this tool. For example, you can use the command line interface for Windows by following this link and using the MCA installer. This is probably the easier way to install the tools in Windows. I have already done that, so I will show you the, my, my console. Here it is, 
Oh, sorry. This has been a, a little of a spoiler. But anyway, look at this. I can check that the tools are correctly installed by executing AWS slash slash version. It should return as some number. And hello, here we are. And now that we know that we have this version installed and running in our machines, I will divide the screen in two, in two different parts. And I will use this small file, the credentials files, to configure a user for this tool. To do that, I open the file and look for the access key and the secret key. And the secret key goes from here to here. And I will execute AWS configure command, setting the access key. And after that, the Hey, hello, thank you, the secret key. And I will use European Union West 1, Ireland, as my default uh, region. And the default format, it is okay for me if the default format key is, is JSON, which is the default value. Perfect. Now we have configured the AWS command line interface. Next step is to create our bucket. We go to the S3 service. Here I have it. I have several buckets already created on this account. I will create a new one. The name is going to be test programmer dot cloud because I can control this domain. I am the owner of the domain of my blog programmer dot cloud. I will choose Ireland as the region of the bucket and I'm not going to select a, an, a source bucket to copy the, co the content. I will click next and here it is. I will not activate the versioning. I will not activate the login, but it is really important to keep a log of the and the use that your customers make of your packet. And I will not tuck it just to keep the tutorial as short as I can. But it is important to both activate the login and to tag correctly your resources in the cloud. I will click next and I will activate the read permissions for the content to everybody. Why? Because it is a website you should be able to access this website no matter where you are. Okay, finally I will press next and create. In a few seconds, here it is our bucket. Our next step, and click, I, I have clicked over the bucket and our next step is going to be to configure it. And for that purpose, I will press properties and I will look, oh, sorry, I will look for static website here. And I will activate the use of this bucket as a web server, basically. I have to indicate that the default page is going to be index HTML. If somebody tries to, re to recover a creates a request for a resource and that resource does not exist, S3 is going to try again appending index.html to the path of the previous resource. So we hope that uh, we will return the index file of the folder. And in this case, we can use whatever you want, for example, 404 HTML to return a page Play, explain to the user that the uh, resource has not been found. Uh, remember, this is the endpoint of this bucket. This is the address that a user will need to type in their browser to access this bucket, unless we will create a record for it. I will press save, and looks like it is everything is okay.
next uh, step is to create a small a small website let's do that now i'm going to retrieve again our editor and i will create a simple a simple html file uh, let's say something like this I hope you are a fan of the best TV series ever. And you will recognize this price. Okay, I already have my web page. I will save it. Let's say I'm going to do that in the root folder uh, where it is the new option here in a directory called website and this is going to be index html and i will also create another one uh oh uh oh exterminate and i will save it as again website 404 html we have both files already created in the website folder okay after this we are going to use the command line interface to upload those files so i will close this file say here and I will move myself to that folder, cd to website. Let's check everything is okay here. It is. I will clear the screen and I'm going to use the copy command to copy all the files in this folder to our new S3 bucket. The command is AWS S3 copy CP. And I will set the permissions of all the files to be public read. That way all the files that we are uploading are going to be available to the users through a simple web browser. And also you will find interesting this option, even if in this case it's not mandatory, because it will try to recursively copy all the subfolders in the current one. Uh, yeah. Another parameter is the source folder of the of the files. It could be this one, but being already in this folder, I can substitute this path by a simple dot, which means the folder in which I am currently positioned and the destination which is going to be sorry because it does not fit in a single line now the destination is going to be the test programmer.cloud folder that we uh, excuse me bucket that we have created a few minutes ago i will press enter and then 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 upload and upload okay it looks like we have already uploaded both files. I will open again the static website hosting option because I do not remember this address. I will copy it and let me show you the content of this file. Oh, it works. I just pasted that address here and hello sweetie, I hate you. I really, you really need to watch Doctor Who, okay? And if I try to find the uh, to retrieve index.html, well, I will get the same answer, the same response. Okay. And if I try to retrieve an unexistent file, let's say winky HTML, I will get the 404 file as we have co configured previously. Perfect. Now we just need to finish our tutorial by configuring root 53. To do that, I will move myself to the root 53 service. You can make this screen 
this window big again. Yeah, it is root 53. And I have already created a hosted zone, which is basically a way to configure, to manage a domain name. So I will select it. It is the hosted zone for programmer.cloud. Here you can see it. And what I'm going to do is to create a new record set. A new record set will allow me to use a scene name, which is a canonical name is a way to transfer one address into another. So I, will, I can use test.programmer.cloud as a, let's say, a synonymous for the whole endpoint that we have seen before. Test programmer.cloud on S3 website, European Union, West One, on Amazon AWS, US.com. And the rest of the configuration is okay. So if I if I click create, okay, here it is. Our C name is already created. I will wait for a few minutes, two, three, five at most. And it will try to access this address instead of this one. It should work, okay? I will pause the tutorial right now. So you do not need to wait for it. Okay, I'm back and here we go. Let's try it. Test on programmer.cloud, but on the .cloud top level domain. I will click on it and perfect, have done it. Okay, probably you want to know also how to redirect an APA, APEX domain. An, APEX, an APA domain is basically the important part of the domain without any subdomain. But, and how to use your own certificates to provide HTTP access to your hosted zone, excuse me, to your hosted bucket. But this will be part of another tutorial. As always, thank you very much and be sure to contact me if you need any clarification. See you.